the high seas, high seas. Cast my line, now they're biting. Rocky coast and lighthouses, what she knows now I doubt it. Talk to me nice. I think your confusion starts with street lights. Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your April 2019 reading with me. For those of you who are new, welcome to my channel. And if you're coming back, welcome back. So for those of you guys who are not new, you know that I like to talk a little bit about astrology before I get into the tarot readings. I think it's important to know what houses we're dealing with as people and energy. So Sagittarius, let's talk a little bit about April and what that means for you. So we've got Aries and Taurus season. By the time you guys watch this, it'll be Taurus. It's already Taurus season. So we're going to have to look back into the past a little bit to see how you entered April and how Aries season was for you guys. So Aries season is quite beneficial, I would assume, to Sagittarius as a fire sign, okay? You're going to feel that fiery energy in April for sure. Aries is five houses away from you, Sagittarius. So the first part of the first half of April was extremely focused on the pleasure that you feel, the creativity, okay? That's what Aries represents to you. It's literally you creating a new version of yourself, you being you being a more pleasurable version of yourself, being a you that focuses on the more romantic side of things because this is the house of romance. So who who are you in relation to creativity, pleasure, and romance? That's what Aries is saying. We did have a new moon in Aries earlier this month, you guys. So that was a new moon in your fifth house of creativity, setting new intentions to create. Um, and this has to do with who you are, right? That's what Aries represents. So very fiery energy there, you guys. Even though Aries is a cardinal fire sign, this could very well have taught you guys how to change and be more mutable as far as the actions that you're taking and as far as the authority, which is that cardinal fire. You're a mutable fire sign, Sagittarius. But I do think it was beneficial. I know I always enjoy when energy is in Cancer or Scorpio as a water sign. So hopefully you guys are at least feeling a little, little bit more ignited. I even lit this, this candle for you guys because I wanted to make sure there was at least some fire here for you. Yeah, let's see. And then the second half of April, which is where we are now, this is the energy moving into Taurus. So we're moving from your fifth house to your sixth house, you guys. This is going to have everything to do with lifestyle, services, your job, and your health, okay? So in a nutshell, Sagittarius, um, April is definitely about you creating um, a new life for yourself, creating in creating basically new services um, that cause you pleasure. This could even be about romance, you guys, how romance and children are playing a factor into your lifestyle. And um, this is about a healthier version of you. Coming into the end of April is definitely about a healthier version of you guys. You guys could be starting to focus more on your lifestyle, how you're living. Um, let's see... Definitely different things about health, working out, eating differently. You guys, I would not be surprised if Taurus season kind of brings that up for you, okay? One of the major things I want to talk to you about, Sagittarius, or at least mention, is Jupiter going retrograde. I'm not sure how long Jupiter is going to be retrograde, but Jupiter is in Sagittarius, and it is your ruling planet, you guys. So whenever your ruling planet, or whenever any planet goes retrograde, it's definitely important to take note of. So you guys might want to do some research on that. Check out some other YouTubers on um, YouTube until I can get a chance to record a video. I do want to talk a bit about Jupiter and Sagittarius going retrograde. This is the planet of luck and fortune, expansion, higher learning, beliefs, all those Sagittarius things. I think you guys are going to start going um, into a phase of reflection with Jupiter retrograding. So very interesting topic there. We did have two full moons in Libra um, this month, you guys. One on well, month, one last month on March twentieth, and then we had another Libra full moon on April nineteenth, and this was hitting your eleventh house. Um, let's see, your twelve. Yeah, Libra is eleven signs away from you, so this was bringing completions to certain friendships, groups of people, and communities. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's been cycles coming to the completion with certain friends in groups, you know, no longer hanging out with certain groups, starting to hang out with new groups. This is a completely new cycle of friends, um, and this is collective energy. But I did talk about that in both of my Libra Full Moon videos, so if you guys want to check that out, um, please do so. 
So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the card, Sagittarius. Sorry the video's so late, you guys. Um, it's been a crazy month, but I still wanted to record this April video just in case any of you guys are out there waiting for messages from me. And I know that anyone who's meant to hear this will hear this no matter what time it is, logically. So I do have a new deck that I'm using this month, you guys. It's the Nature's Whisper deck. This is a gift from me from an Aries friend of mine. So shout out to Brooke for giving me this deck. It's quite beautiful. It fits with my um, Easter theme. By the way, happy Easter. Um, those of you guys who celebrated Easter, I hope you had a happy Easter. To me, this was all about the portal of rebirth. That's what Easter is really about, you guys. The spring equinox. All right, rebirth energy. So I'm calling it the portal of rebirth this month. Hopefully that was a... Um, a nice Easter for you. Let me lower, sit, get down here a little bit. Oh, too far. Oh, shoot. But we are going to start with that oracle card, you guys. This is going to be a message for you for April, and we're going to read from the book. All right, let's see what you guys have for April. You guys have be true to your heart. Be true to your heart, Sagittarius. Now, I do want to mention Libra also received this message. Okay, so for a sign to receive the same message as another sign, you could be dealing with a Libra, you could have significant Libra energy, and if so, you might want to check the Libra video out because you and Libra are receiving the same card. Now let's go ahead and read from this, this book, and I do want to say before I forget Sagittarius, it was really interesting, the bottom of your deck is open your heart. So we've got be true to your heart and open your heart. Okay, a lot of heart energy. There's even a leap of faith here. Some of you guys are going to take a risk and open your heart this month and be true to your heart in that way. Okay, let's go ahead and see what page this card is on. It is card number 26, if that's important to anybody out there. And it's on page 43. This is definitely the same message Libra got. So it says, in this moment, draw on the energies of harmony and union when making a choice. The current situation is best supported using intuition and not intellect. There may be difficult decisions to, to be made that are not necessarily about love. Consciously be aware of what interests you, what attracts your attention, and what stirs your imagination and creates passion in your life. Do your best to ignore the persuasion of what others might think or say. Trust yourself and don't allow your opinion to be swayed. So... You know, when I when I got this card for Libra, it very much suited Libra, I felt. And now I'm feeling that same way about you guys, especially because it's talking about balance and harmony. You guys know you're the temperance card. So balance is a thing that comes up for Sagittarius as well. You guys might have some, um, some decisions to make, some choices to make this month. The current situation is best supported by using intuition, Sagittarius, and not intellect. Um, maybe some difficult decisions here. Let's see here. Make sure you're consciously aware of what interests you, what attracts your attention. We all know how attention is for Sagittarius. You guys can be, you know, a lot of Sagittarius think they have ADHD, but I just feel like that's not, I mean, it could be true for some of you guys, but I'm a very deep thinker. And I feel like Sagittarius just focuses on a lot of things at once. You guys are very energetic. You have a lot of stamina and you can get bored quite easily. So focus on what um, attracts your attention and what stirs that imagination, Sagittarius. You are kind of an imagination, imagination sign, just like Pisces. It also says, focus on what creates passion in your life. That is so fire sign. So your energy is also um, good for this card. It's also relating to you guys, okay? Do your best to ignore the persuasion of what others might think or say. Trust yourself and don't allow your opinion to be swayed. So you guys have got some choices to make in... What it's saying here is make sure that you're being true to your heart. Make sure that you're opening your heart. Now, I do want to look at this card again just to see if there's anything. Because these cards are incredibly detailed. They're very, very beautiful, okay? So I want to give you guys a chance to just kind of look over this card. And then I'm going to look over it too and see if anything jumps out at me. I mean, I'm already seeing the, the peacock feathers. There's some fish over here. Some of you guys could have Pisces energy or you're dealing with Pisces. That really feels like a Pisces energy to me back there. We've got a crescent moon. We've got this angel coming out of this kind of this old school record player over here. So there might be some kind of calling this month, some kind of awakening, butterfly energy, transformation, hummingbirds. And then there's these, um, these ships. There's these three ships over here, which reminds me of the three of wands. And for whatever reason, the three of wands actually reminds me of Sagittarius anyways. 
So this could talk about um, travel. It could talk. Some of you guys could be in boats, canoes. You guys could be in, in the water, especially because it's getting warmer. But I'm definitely seeing butterflies, transformation, rebirth. If there's anything on this card, like hummingbirds, um, shells, I'm not sure what kind of flowers these are. But if anything jumps out at you guys, these could also be symbols for April, okay? But we're opening our heart here. We're being true to our heart. Let's go ahead and get into the tarot messages. So I already shuffled Sagittarius. Now, to be honest with you, today is like not the best day for me. I wanted to record your guys' reading last night when the moon was conjunct Jupiter, but I was just too tired and there was just so much going on that I didn't want to, you know, ruin your video, but I definitely wanted to get your reading out. So I'm pushing through the energy. It could be very possible that what I'm feeling is what some of you guys are feeling as you're watching. So I did think about that too. Like, is Sagittarius irritated too? Are you guys like kind of upset and angry a little bit or maybe feeling flustered? Because there's a lot going on in April. Especially right now as I'm recording this, we've got Uranus and the Sun conjuncting and Chiron and Venus conjunct, like a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the universe, Sag, plus Jupiter's retrograde. But I did shuffle and I did call upon your energy and what we wound up with is the Nine of Cups at the bottom of the deck, which I'm, I'm happy. I'm hoping that this resonates with most of you. This is about um, water energy. This is about emotional fulfillment in a wish fulfillment as well so there's something here in april about focusing on what would make you happy you know not compromising yourself anymore not allowing your opinion to be swayed about what a wish fulfillment would be for you okay that's what the nine of cups is all about underneath the nine of cups is the king of cups could be scorpio pisces cancer masculine energy around you but i feel like this is about if you're not dealing with water signs everyone has emotion so this is about emotion and this is about stabilizing your emotion, okay? The King of Cups has mastered his emotion. And it's like, the more you do that this month, Sagittarius, the more you're going to align yourself with true emotional satisfaction and possibly even a wish come true, okay? Wish fulfillment here for some of you guys in April. But let's see what comes out as I shuffle. So what are the messages for Sagittarius for April 2019? What are the messages for Sagittarius all right, we have your first three cards coming out, just like it did for many of my readings. Um, and I think that that's because the, this is the first week of April that I'm focusing on. And that, or the first half, I should say, the first two weeks. We have the Hermit, we have the Five of Wands, and we have the Death card. Okay, we got a Virgo and a Scorpio battle going on here for some of you guys. Um, yeah, we have two major arcana in the five of wands in between that. So definitely some conflict here, some major conflict for some of you guys. We'll get to that message in a minute. We do have the page of pentacles at the bottom. So this could be happening in the workplace. This could be, um, <clears throat> this could be happening as we enter Taurus season with this page of pentacles, this new value. Okay, this new seed that you guys are planting. This is that sixth house of lifestyle that you're going through. So is the hermit. Alright, so yeah, there's definitely maybe some walking away from finances or earth signs. This is a message though, you guys. So there's something here about some kind of message financially or earthy, some kind of logical message coming in by the second half of April. Let's go ahead and get the last half of your reading just so we have the full picture. But I, I'm telling you guys, many of my readings this month, the first three cards are coming out um, together. And I think that's because the first half of April kind of happened together, and then we're coming into the future here. Okay, so let's look into the future. <clears throat> what are the messages for Sagittarius for April 2019? What else do we have for Sagittarius? We have the Nine of Pentacles, okay, with the Six of Pentacles at the bottom. A lot of finances coming up here because you're going through... With Taurus season, that's going to bring a lot of attention to that very logical realm of reality, life, health. You know, all those things are very realistic. So there's some financial balance here at the end of April that you guys are going to be focusing on. Your independence. Let's see what else we have for Sagittarius. Give me two more cards for Sagittarius for April 2019. What are the messages for Sagittarius, April? Ooh, we almost had the High Priestess come out. Okay, so there is something that you don't know yet coming in at the end of April there's something here that you need to follow your intuition about I like this card because it does talk about things being unrevealed like there's something that has yet to be revealed at yet the high priestess does symbolize someone who has a gut feeling about that anyway so certain secrets maybe you know we have the four of wands and the page of wands poking out here um, and I think this is the ace of cups maybe or maybe that 
Oh, that King of Cups again. So Leo, Scorpio energy, or basically just fire signs and water sign energy. And I just put this, I don't know why that happened, but I actually set the High Priestess um, at, on the table in reverse. So it could be that there's some secrets being revealed, especially those of you guys who are in home environments, marriages, some kind of celebration. Okay, there's, there's something here about secrets and marriage um, right here, okay? But it hasn't been revealed to you yet. Okay, you could be dealing with a Taurus, but yeah, right here, guys, this is either Taurus season or a Taurus that you're dealing with. But if it's not a Taurus, this is a commitment with the Four of Wands and the Hierophant. That is such a marriage for those of you who are married. You know, you guys could still be feeling single or just trying to be independent, but there are some secrets and some of you are definitely dealing with a Taurus. We have the Queen of Pentacles, which is my Taurus card. All right, so something here, it's Sagittarius. Something here is, this is like... I don't want to be like the the surprise ruiner, but this to me looks like a, a secret proposal for some of you guys, someone who has not revealed yet that they want to marry you, but you're following your intuition about marriage, commitment, celebration. Could be some secrets too, but let's go ahead and continue because that high priestess didn't come all the way out because it's, it's definitely something that hasn't been revealed yet in the home environment, something like that. We have the seven of swords. Whoo, okay. All right with that page of pinnacles again okay so it's definitely like a younger earth sign for some of you guys or it's just some kind of message at, this could be definitely happening financially or at work yeah some of you guys are really stressed out as far as finances there's a choice to make here because there's some kind of financial message coming in towards the end of april for most of you it might be in regards again to a happy home a relationship and then we have knight of wands which is you sagittarius and then we have the devil card, okay? We have Gemini here. Oh, look, temperance. Sad, you guys are having a lot of anxiety, okay? I'm just reading the cards here. You guys are having a lot of anxiety in April, probably over some kind of loss, okay? Or depression, maybe. I mean, come on. I'm not talking to you guys. It just makes me sad, you know? Because I know, I know my 12th house is Sagittarius. So I kind of know subconsciously what you guys are going through. A lot of loss and regret here that either you or someone else is feeling because of you. But we have the temperance here with the nine of swords. So lots of anxiety, maybe sleepless nights, insomnia for some of you. Um, the five of cups is something that needs to change about a conflict emotionally. So try try really hard not to focus so much on the dark and the gloom because we've got some depression here, Sag. But we also have victory and happiness that needs to be manifested. Gemini and Capricorn here. Okay, some of you are dealing with a Capricorn, or maybe this is addiction, toxicity, codependency, some sort of obsession. You know, we definitely have Sag here charging forward to, to their um, emotional fulfillment again. But first, you know, there's some juggling, there's some choices. Two people, places, or things that you're juggling that you value. You value them both. You value both of these people, places, and things. But there is some kind of message coming in here. Let's get your last card. This is kind of the end of April. This is basically where we are right now. One more card for Sagittarius. We have the Queen of Pentacles coming out. Okay. Bottom of your deck is the Eight of Swords. And I did just see a little bit of a corner of the tower. And now I'm seeing the Ten of Swords. So definitely some painful endings that some of you guys are feeling trapped in in April. And this could be something that kind of shocks you. It kind of falls down suddenly because it was built on a false foundation. So a lot of stuff coming up here. You know, I'm in the perfect energy for whoever this reading resonates with. Trust me, I'm right there with you feeling these similar energies just in my own way. So oftentimes I do realize that the universe will put me through certain things before I record certain videos for certain signs. And that always serves <clears throat> a greater purpose. Okay, so we're going to start interpreting some of this. So to me, this is the first half of April, especially because the first three cards came out all together. And then these cards all came out one at a time. So we're grouping the first half of April together, basically the ending of Aries season. All right, the first card is the Hermit. So there's a lot of different ways to interpret this. You guys could have came into April feeling a bit introverted, which introverted Sagittarius are quite interesting to me because your guys' energy represents a very extra, I would say, you know, that Sagittarius represents a very extroverted energy. And that's because you guys are studiers, you're adventurers, you're philosophers. A lot of people say Sagittarius are, are loud and energetic. You know, I love that personally. 
But there are times, you know, where we're going inward, especially times like these when there's just so much going on. I know there's some empaths out there, Sagittarius is watching. And for those, for those of you who are more sensitive, have more of the, the water placements and the earth placements, I think you guys are feeling this. So you came into April feeling a bit isolated, maybe even a bit lonely. But there was something important about your solitude coming into April with this hermit. Now, there could be a specific Virgo here, too. This is the card for Virgo. So I don't know if there was a Virgo that was influencing something at the beginning of April or at some time in April. But basically, Sagittarius, I feel like this is you reflecting. Come, now, this is that Jupiter retrograde energy that's going to make you guys reflect. I did say that in the beginning that you guys might be doing some reflecting on the past. So we do have this very this very introverted hermit spending some time on your own, spending some time going inward to reflect. And I'm kind of seeing why, because the next card we have is the five of wands. Now, this is that fire energy. You're going to feel this, OK, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius energy. This is something that needs to change as far as how someone's expressing themselves in April. Now, that might be why someone's going inward. This is more of a silent hush hush card. The hermit, very, very wise energy here. So I do feel the need, now it sucks because the first half of April has already gone with, but if there happens to be any conflict for the rest of April, Sagittarius, what the cards are saying is just, you know, kind of isolate yourself from these kind of energies, people who are all riled up because it's spring and because of the Aries energy, because of Mars. Now this could be Mars, um, Mars energy in Gemini, okay? Mars is in Gemini until like May, I think, and sometime in May it's going to shift into Cancer. Whoo, I'm not ready for that. But Sag, Mars is opposing you. It's in your opposite sign, Gemini, meaning there is conflict coming up in relationships, but it could also just energize you. It could give you a lot of um, masculine attraction. Mars, Mars is not all bad, but come on now. Mars is the god of war, and I am seeing that there's some conflicts here, and, and I'm just being led to tell you guys to be very wise amongst these competitors, amongst this hostility. Be very wise about what you say because... Let's see, Sag Capricorn Aquarius is your third house, and that's all about what you're saying. So I don't know. You're going through a lot of collective energy, and when you go through collective energy, everything's timed by 11. So it can seem like, you know, some of your friends or some of the people around. Now, you are somewhere on this card, Sagittarius. You you have a wand as well, but everyone's waving their 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 wand of expression around in a different way. And if we're not careful in April, we can butt heads. So I feel like some of you guys had some conflict in April. Hopefully it's over now. Um, this seems like more the first half of April seemed a bit conflicting. I mean, you guys could definitely be on... You know how you can get Sag? I love it. You guys, you guys can pop off really fast, okay? You're trying to be wise about this, but there's also some people around you that literally deserve to get kind of punched in the face. I think you guys feel that. Like, hopefully no one punched anybody in the face um, at the beginning of April, but I am seeing that some conflict something that needs to change you know a lot of aggression but you guys are fire signs i think this is in a really weird way this energizes you um you're kind of used to those energies but some of you guys are more on the aspect of not wanting to fight anymore wanting to just kind of be alone in april because everyone else seems to be so hostile you know this is going to resonate with someone and it could be a scorpio that you're dealing with too because now we have the death card definitely virgo scorpio energy here quite blatantly but this could also just be about a sudden ending that causes conflict. You know, someone goes inward to reflect on this conflict at the beginning of April, whether this is an argument or an actual physical fight. It's just, you know, I think the collective is being quite hostile to Sagittarius with these full moons in your 11th house of friends. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if, if people are expressing themselves in a very harsh way. Now, that could be because Mercury is in Aries, too. A lot of people, this is like literally Mercury and Aries energy to me, where everyone's kind of just focused on their self and what they're passionate about, and they don't really care if, if it's causing hostility amongst other people, you know. But we have the death card, meaning that that is going to end. There could have been a sudden ending or a beginning. This could be a, a literal death for some of you, too. This is not usually a, a, a literal death. It's usually a metaphorical spiritual death where we're focusing more on what we're becoming reborn as, okay? So, yeah, definitely some kind of transformation, which I feel you guys need coming into the second half of April because, obviously, there's some isolated conflict. Now, for some of you guys, it's getting a little bit... There's some conflict here because someone or you is isolating themselves too much. Now, this could be a case where Sagittarius is not expressing what they feel at the beginning of April. And what more 
could make Sagittarius feel like this. This could definitely be your energy, okay? Conflict within yourself, because this does look like a, um, an inner conflict for some of you guys who aren't resonating with outside conflict. This could be an internal conflict here that needs to transform and end in April. I love seeing that death card, because the death card puts an ending, and it, it, it causes an ending to any of the cards around it. Now, some of you also could be dealing with a Scorpio. You could have Scorpio energy. Virgo and Scorpio are really important for you guys at the beginning of April. All right? So you want to look to Virgo on your birth chart. You want to look to Scorpio on your birth chart because I'm, I guarantee you it has something to do with this inner conflict. All right? And it's really interesting. We've got a Virgo face in this way. We've got a Scorpio face in this way. And then there's this conflict in the middle. So very interesting. First half of April looks a little bit like someone's go, just going in, inward, trying to be wise about everything that's changing. You know, with these cards here, this is like, there's some conflict here with ending something. There is some conflict linked to a new beginning or rebirth, okay? This, this change is not coming without conflict um, at the beginning of April. But you do come into the second week of April completely transformed. Which is why we start the second half of April with the Nine of Pentacles, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn energy. Very feminine energy here. This is my single woman card. So some of you guys feel very isolated. You're just, you're kind of enjoying your solitude in April, okay? There could be a single Virgo here. Just someone who's reflecting on, you know, being independent, being single, their finances. This is someone who's in a gilded cage. So they're quite comfortable. They're attractive. They're kind of single and ready to mingle. But... There's some aspect in April that if you if you really looked inward, Sagittarius, if you really reflected on this situation, you would realize that that it's a gilded cage, meaning that it's a comfortable prison. Okay, there there might be a person, a place, a thing that's very comfortable to you guys, um, probably because you get alone time or you just you know some of you live on your own and there's a lot of solitude here. Now someone is single and lonely too. There's a lonely single dweller here coming up in this energy. And that might be what's, you know, causing conflict. Because someone here has to handle conflict all on their own inside. There's a, there's someone here listening to me that feels extremely alone with conflict. And that needs to change, okay? Someone here feels all alone during a, a very tremendous transformation or awakening. You know, we do have butterflies here and stuff. So, you know, but yeah, back to this Nine of Pentacles, Gilded Cage energy. You might want to research the Gilded Cage. I always say with this card that it doesn't matter how comfortable you are. If you can't leave a job, a person, or a place, then it's a cage. It's a jail. And you know how freedom is to you, Sagittarius. So this is you really trying to enjoy your freedom. This is you aligning yourself with the Law of Abundance. This is a very abundant card. Some of you guys are doing pretty well financially, it looks like on your own and you're reflecting on that you're reflecting on some kind of conflict and maybe at the end of april this conflict changes and now you're in a much better place i really hope that's the case all right this is about the fruit of your labor all right and this is that sixth house energy that taurus energy coming in at the, the end of april for you guys all right now the next card is something that needs to be talked about because we do have the seven of swords here okay so this card, it's, it's been in a few readings this month, so we're definitely dealing with um, hidden agendas, lying, cheating, stealing, you know, deception, betrayal kind of energy. The Seven of Swords is a sneaky motherfucker to me. Um, sometimes the Seven of Swords is an energy that we have to take on. When Remember, the High Priestess almost showed up here, so there is something here that, that hasn't been revealed to you yet. You guys may find out uh, about some sort of cheating or if, if this is on your behalf you, you know there's just something here that that's revealed and it looks like it was a lie this is a lie and that might be why there's conflict the beginning of the month the conflict that was caused is linked somehow to the, those energies deception lying you know there might be some thieves around you that are that are in competition with you now whenever i see the seven of swords surrounded by money and pinnacles i, I want to tell whoever's watching to be very careful about that careful about people just being with you for money or a place to live or security stability you know we, we've got some earth energy here with the seven of swords so be careful about your money okay and i don't mean just people stealing money from you someone might lose a wallet um you know this might be government energy where your job takes too much of your money you're not getting paid enough you know like this looks like an energy here where someone feels like they're 
all they worked for, all their hard work and abundance is being stolen. So I do want to say that abundance can never be taken from you, Sagittarius. You know, that, that can never be taken from you. This is about your stability. You're feeling like there's, um, it's like almost something like too good to be true here. All right. Heading into the sixth house of Taurus. We literally have Taurus here or a Virgo or a Capricorn, but this is my Taurus woman. Okay, and this Seven of Swords is walking away from her to this Nine of Pentacles. So another thing here is that someone may be single because of deception and lies. Like there's been too much hidden agenda. There's been too much conflict and lying, cheating, stealing, deception. So someone would just rather be on their own. Someone here, now if it's not any of that, someone here is definitely taking back everything that's theirs because the seven of swords is also a card that comes up for people who need to take back what is theirs so hopefully that's what it is but others of you i do feel unfortunately you are dealing with you know conflict and competition amongst a cheater a deceiver someone who's wearing a false mask you know what i mean they're quite smug they're they're right out here in the middle of the daylight stealing all these swords and this is a gemini libra aquarius energy for some of you guys okay so some of you guys feel like your independence is trying to be stolen from you and that that could really upset a Sagittarius that could really cause conflict for a Sagittarius okay um so I don't know if this is linked to a Taurus Virgo Capricorn or if this is linked to finances and at work there could be someone in the work environment especially at the end of April who you just don't trust you don't trust them with money you don't trust them with security or anything like that probably don't trust anything they say Okay, remember, this is this was almost a high priestess, so you guys want to follow your intuition at the end of the month. If you feel like you're being cheated on, if you feel like you're being deceived, if you feel like you're being lied to in any way in relation to the conflict that happened at the beginning of April, you want to follow your own gut instinct because this is going to be revealed to you guys in some way at the end of April. One last thing here, this could be self-deception. Some of you guys could be deceiving yourself, so it's going to depend on the Sagittarius, but... I'm just reading the cards. I do feel like there's that energy there. And, and of course, with the Nine of Pentacles, the single woman and the Seven of Swords, this is a single, someone who's single, male, male or female. And, you know, because of cheating and all that, they're just kind of on their own now. Like, they're just going to test the waters and, you know, just do them. This is someone who's just doing them because, because of deception around them. And then we have this Queen of Pentacles, which is seriously coming up as a Taurus woman to me, but this is an Earth sign woman. You guys could have this energy in your chart. The Queen of Pentacles is extremely concerned. Um, she would be extreme. This kind of energy would be extremely concerned with deceptive people amongst their home and finances. For some of you guys, this is someone in your home environment who is, you know, you don't trust them. You know, that they, they feel very sneaky, deceptive. It's like always having to watch your back, um, you know, keeping your eyes kind of shifty, wait, you know, watching your back kind of energy. But yeah, the Queen of Pentacles is very concerned with the stability of her home, her work life. This is the Mother Earth here, okay, the Queen of Earth. So she has kind of mastered this energy of stability. She has mastered the reality realm. She's very logical, but she's also very nurturing and sensitive about what she values, okay? So I don't know if this is you or someone outside of you, Sagittarius. This could be an energy that you're trying to master by the end of April because of that Taurus energy. That that Taurus energy is going to really make you guys reflect on your own worth, your own value, your own reality, things that are tangible. Taurus rules the, the realm of resources. And for you guys, this is about the resources you have as far as health. You're going to start using the resources around you to, to act healthier, to eat better. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, this is about mastering that realm before we enter Gemini season, which is going to be your seventh house of relationship. Before we can go through that, we have to reevaluate where our life is headed, right? Um, and, and the people around us, are there people around you who are decept deceptive? This person is causing a lot of conflicts, okay? Probably in a home environment or in a work situation, so much so that by the end of April, you guys are extremely focused on your values. Remember that Nine of Cups that came out too. So yeah, this is definitely about something that would fulfill you. Remember, be true and open your heart, which is kind of an interesting message here as far as your reading. You know, it's kind of hard to open your heart and to trust your heart when there's so much conflict and deception. Like this could be conflict that is a deception. This conflict could be what is the thief in this situation. 
You know, this is an energy that is linked to something that needs to change. You know, this is someone who's willing to fight for things to change. Because it's a number five. Anytime you get a five of cups, five of wands, like, it's something that needs to change because there's too much, like, friction. There's too much conflict. Someone here is go going to fight for that. Someone here is, is fighting this conflict in the name of change, rebirth, death. Even if they have to do it on their own by the end of April. Even if they have to kind of take back everything that's theirs and just... Even if it's a gilded cage, even if you feel like you're in a prison, you know, it's about your comfort, which is such a sixth house lifestyle kind of energy. I'm pretty sure this is another card for Virgo, too. You know, this is a card that relates to Virgo. This is Virgo. So, yeah, seven. It's really interesting. I'm really focused here on the middle of your reading because it's like Earth, Earth, Death, Hermit. So it's like the outside of your reading is has something to do with, with the core there's a core here to focus on in um april and that core most likely has something to do with conflict and deception some kind of competition that you're fighting something like that okay so let's see here before we look into the bottom of the deck let's go through the energy so you have pinnacles you have sword and you have fire you don't have any water here okay i don't see any cups and so some of you guys, I know for sure that you're avoiding your emotion this month, probably because it's Aries season, Taurus season, you know, we have quite a while before we're back in water, you know, Pisces season is over now. And so we're really, you know, maybe you're isolating yourself from what you feel, but I do feel that because you have no water here. There's no emotion. Like some of you guys have feel very emotionally abandoned or you're just not really sure how you feel in April or maybe how you feel just seems irrelevant to the situation so you're going inward on your own I see a lot of independence here I see someone who's who are, who's more wise and more stable on their own okay and that's what you're transforming into by the end of April Sagittarius someone who's who's very stable and grounded okay you may have a, a female around you Taurus Virgo Capricorn that is significant to the situation but I don't like the fact that, that, you know, the Seven of Swords is pretty much looking right at this Queen of Pentacles. So I don't know if there's some cheating or lying or deception going on with an Earth sign this month. Some kind of Earth sign that has a hidden agenda. There, this could be someone who kind of holds money over your head or, you know, but if that's the situation, Sagittarius, you have your own independence here that you're reflecting on. So the, your reading is making sense. Like, this is someone who needs to reflect on their own independence, their own value and abundance. Um, instead of allowing that to be taken from you, okay? Because the Nine of Pentacles and the Queen of Pentacles are kind of similar. They're both independent women. They both have their own values that they're focused on. But the Queen here, you know, this is someone who, who feels like they're in charge of, you know, the finances or, or some kind of home environment. And, um, you know, I'm not sure what's going on here, honestly, but I don't like this energy here. So there might be something at the end of April that, that, that pops off, some kind of hidden agenda that an earth sign has or something like that. And because of that, someone just kind of embraces their own singleness. And I know for sure that you're avoiding your emotion, Sagittarius, because at the bottom of the deck, we have the Eight of Swords. My Eight of Swords card, this is a woman or a person. It doesn't have to be a woman, but this is a person who is in a mental prison. You know, same energy here. It's like you're going to find out what, what where the chains are, where the boundaries are in April. And, and, you know, it may cause some conflict. It's like there is someone here for someone out there listening that there's a taker. Someone who just takes and takes and takes from you, takes away from your value, takes even your money maybe, um, you know. So, Gilded Cage, this prison might not be as comfortable as it once was coming into the end of April. And you see how the woman's feet is not in the water. So, this person is not grounding themselves emotionally, meaning that they're putting themselves really far into their head, a lot of thoughts, you're feeling trapped. This is like a negative victim mindset, okay? You're feeling bound and you, you're blindfolded to what you see and what you think. So, you know, someone here is trying to find the way forward mentally. Like, how can I get out of this situation? Someone needs financial balance before they can leave. Okay, someone here, you might be dealing with a Libra or an Earth sign. But yeah, financial balance is, is very much linked to this prison. So for some of you guys, this is just about a job in co-worker energy. Okay, but yeah, this is about the equal give and take, like no longer giving more than you receive, no longer receiving more than you give. It, it needs to be very balanced with this Libra energy. 
that took place. This is a very sixth house energy for you, that lifestyle energy. So for you to get out of your head, Sagittarius, and live a better life, live a better, a healthier life, there's something here that needs to be balanced. You might need to ask for help. This is like charity, you know, receiving help from um, an extended hand. Someone may need your help. Someone here needs financial help to get out of a prison, to get out of their own head before they can leave. Okay, we have the Six of Swords now. So someone here is leaving a, an unbalanced situation. Someone here is leaving a situation where they feel like they weren't getting enough in return. You know what I mean? Like there was just someone here who took, 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 and they never gave anything except conflict. Um, so yeah, there is some moving on here, getting to more stable waters. Um, this is usually a sad trip though. You know what I mean? Like this is usually someone who's traveling in a car who's crying or someone who's in a boat again, traveling. Okay. Definitely some travel going on here. Um, maybe someone here is visiting someone in prison. Someone here might be visiting someone in prison or leaving someone behind who's in prison and no longer like giving them money, stuff like that. We have the Queen of Wands, a female Leo, female Sag, female Aries, fire sign energy though, okay? This is about, this is another queen here, the Queen of Fire. This is someone who's mastered their own vision, okay? You don't want to mess with the Queen of Wands because she knows what she's passionate about even if things around her seem suddenly over. There is something here that seems suddenly over. Could be dealing with an Aries. Some of you are dealing with, um, you know, there's something here with a father figure. There's an Aries here left out in the cold. You guys could have felt left out in the cold or financially co conflicted in Aries season. This looks like something going on with a boss, okay? But there's also some soulmate energy here. This is literally the epitome of Aries being your fifth house of romance, okay? Someone coming back from the past, maybe, after some kind of burden is lifted. But with this energy, this is a boss who left someone out in the cold. It could be you, Sagittarius, if you're an authority figure. And now I'm seeing the lover's card. Yeah, there's, oh, goodness gracious. You're dealing with a soulmate and a twin flame. Someone comes back from the past, which could be a burden for some of you. And then you have a choice to make in love. And look at that, Jupiter. We have Jupiter here, the Wheel of Fortune. So there is some turning of events that takes place in April. It looks like it's happening in your love life or with a Gemini. Um, a choice. There's some kind of choice between two people. Maybe someone is at a distance from you, which is getting kind of a burden. It's like some kind of burden needs to be dropped from the past. Definitely dealing with soulmate twin flame stuff, though. Or someone that you're with physically versus someone who you're connected to emotionally. And then, you know, stepping back into your power with this Aries energy, or maybe you're dealing with an Aries, or just someone who's kind of controlling, leaves you left out in the cold financially. This is literally what we've been talking about this whole reading. Another conflict card, something that needs to change financially now. And then this beautiful combination, holy cow. You know, definitely something that shocks some of you guys. Comes to a screeching halt, a sudden ending, maybe deception, backstabbing, like... But this was a false foundation, Sagittarius. This is something that needs to come crumbling down in a home environment, a job, a situation. There's just something here that's going to be kind of shocking to you guys. It's going to end suddenly. And we have it with the Ten of Swords as well. So, yeah. False foundation here that was causing you pain. All right? Maybe with a fire sign. But that's exactly what you guys are leaving behind in, in, in the name of balance. Okay? Because, yeah, some of you guys are extremely trapped in your head this month in April. Another thing I want to mention here is that this is Scorpio and Taurus, so you want to look to Taurus and Scorpio, that's an opposition, right? So right now, this would be that Uranus energy in, in your sixth house of lifestyle. You know, Sagittarius, Uranus being in your sixth house is kind of a, sh it's like a living a shocking, you might, the way you're living, it may shock other people. That's why you're being told to just kind of do you, open your heart, be true to your heart. Because sixth house Uranus is like surprises when it comes to your lifestyle surprises when it comes to your job or your health okay so uranus is here in taurus the sun is in taurus so you're going to be aware of these changes happening to your life and as far as scorpio scorpio's just chilling you know the moon was there a few days ago the moon is in capricorn as i'm recording this so yeah there's definitely some transformation going on here maybe a sudden ending or beginning in with finances sudden ending or beginning in home Okay, the Queen of Pentacles is a home environment, um, job, all right? There could be someone here who's a mother, but yeah, there looks like there's going to be some transformation here for sure in regards to something that you value, and it is linked to some kind of energy. Do not allow yourself to be deceived at the end of April when it comes to what you value. 
all right that is what's contributing to this underlying energy here and then look at that the same card that was on underneath there we have the nine of cups i just wanted to open up to that card so you want to really really stay stable emotionally don't be too erotic or feed into this conflict isolate yourself from any people or place or things that are contributing to this conflict or competition you know because they're not worth it this looks like somebody who's coming into their own independence taking back everything that 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 is theirs so that they can move into wish fulfillment and out of this prison all right so that is your reading sagittarius i do have one more thing for you guys this little golden egg right here i've got some dice in here there's three dice on one dice is zodiac signs there's houses and then there's planets so i'm gonna give this a shake for you guys and then we're gonna we're gonna see what dice come out for you okay sagittarius april what are the messages for sagittarius for april all right you are the only sign where there's a dice that fell on the floor so let's go ahead and find that dice I have no idea where that dice went. Um, I found it. Well, that's not surprising. It did land on Uranus, okay? But it went off the table, so this is not necessarily um, clarifying anything. This is just a specific planet that you want to look to. Some of you guys have... Um, you know, the moon and Uranus combinations in your birth chart. Okay, whenever the moon is in Taurus, that will be a moon-Uranus combination. So if those of you who guys who, like, focus on uh, the planets, keep in mind whenever the moon is in Taurus, okay? Because it's, it's coming out here with the Taurus energy. Maybe this is about the new moon in Taurus heading into May because we will have a new moon in Taurus. But anyways, guys, okay, we have a, a dice here, and it is the Scorpio dice, but can you see how Virgo is showing there, too, on the Virgo card? Some of you are definitely dealing with a Virgo. But the sign that's coming up for you for April is Scorpio, which is another one of those signs that showed up. So I'm definitely seeing Virgo-Scorpio combinations for some of you, because um, we have a, the Scorpio on the Hermit. So Virgo-Scorpio, I don't know if someone's finding out about that. We do have Sad showing here, too, now. With that arrow but yeah definitely landed on scorpio some of you guys could be isolating yourself from a scorpio I, I didn't mention that before but that's definitely what some of you guys are doing because of conflict so you want to look to scorpio energy this month scorpio is a is a zodiac sign that for some reason is most influential and virgo and that virgo is, is so there's something transforming as you're reflecting this month in your solitude this is a a solo transformation i might name your video that this looks like something that goes down inside of you a lot of internal work some of you guys are doing and then okay the death card we have the second house so this is definitely that taurus energy again there's something here um about your second house of resources and in and values um, transforming there may be a sudden ending which is basically being validated here anyways and it may have something to do with communicating with your friends communicating with groups of people around you but this is what the groups of people around you are looking like this month Sagittarius no wonder you're kind of maybe not hanging out with certain people going inward could be dealing with a Libra or a Capricorn as well but we have the second house so I don't know if value is a thing coming up with this Scorpio energy or if that's just something that's changing for you you know, it's really interesting. Um, you are the second house of Sagittarius of Scorpio, so value. If you're if you're a Sagittarius and you're dealing with a Scorpio, it's very important that they they value you and not see you as a possession because there is something here about possessions changing, and there needs to be some communicating about that. Someone needs to communicate about how they feel about their finances. Especially those of you out there who are resonating with feeling taken from financially. And then we have this Uranus. So planet Uranus, really important. All right, Uranus is in Taurus and it, it literally, it fell off the table there. So that could be really shaking up some things. All right. So I don't know if someone here has a Virgo second house. Um, I'm sorry, a Scorpio second house. 
because we have Scorpio energy, the second house, and Uranus. So you want to look to all those things in your own chart this month, okay? That's what the dice are saying. And I definitely see something transforming about finances. There's some kind of sudden ending to a job or to a home, something there, okay? That's what the death card is clarifying. And you're going to need to communicate about that, okay? So hopefully this helps, Sagittarius. Thanks, guys, for listening. Those of you who still listened, even though there's only like five days left of April, I really hope this was helpful. If you want me to look into your personal energy, I can do so. Just check my description box out for any of that additional information, okay? Other than that, guys, I hope April was, you know, I, I see that some of you out there are really dealing with, with some tough energy, but I still wish you guys the best. I hope that the ending of April is about, hopefully you, you get back everything that was taken from you, Sag, and, um, you know, when this, this deception is revealed, hopefully it just leads you into a more grounded and independent way of living, okay? Thank you guys so much. I'll talk to you guys in May. Bye!